All right, so this week we're going to take a look at a little bit more integration with Photoshop and Illustrator, and we're going to create a realistic diamond plate effect. And the reason I like to use both of these programs is, is because they have very unique features that lend themselves to creating this very effect. Now, you could go ahead and create this effect in one or either of the programs, but using them together makes it that much more easy. And I hope it gives you an idea of how you can use for, uh, features interchangeably to create very interesting effects. So we're going to start inside Illustrator here, as you can see, and I've got a document already created, and I'm going to go over here into the toolbar and grab the Ellipse Shape Tool. And I'm just going to start right up here in the upper left corner and just hold my Shift key down to constrain it to a perfect circle and just draw out a circle like that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and leave the fill. In fact, let's make it a little bit smaller here. Now I'm going to go ahead and leave the fill to black and there's no stroke on here. Notice I've got the stroke set to none. So we just got the plain black circle here. So now we want to create multiple copies of this, but we're going to do it using the live effects here in Illustrator. So go under the effect menu, go to distort and transform and choose transform. Inside here, the first thing we need to do is indicate the number of copies we want to create. Well, I'm going to go ahead and highlight that and let's go ahead and do 25. And let's go ahead and turn on the preview so we can actually see what's happening here. And I'm going to go ahead and take the horizontal setting and push it over so slightly. And you can see it starts to push out those repeats. Well, before I go too far, I'm actually going to also include the vertical setting here. And this, in this case, we're actually going to go into the negative. Because if we go into the positive, you can see it transforms upward. I actually want it to transform downward. So we're going to go into the negative numbers here and push it down like that. So what's going on is this circle is just transforming straight down at an angle. But if you are also inside this window and go over here and click on Reflect X, watch what happens. Now it's giving me, let's space it out a little bit more, and this is, why, this is another reason why it's a really cool, it's a live effect. So all the changes you make inside this window are reflected immediately inside your artboard. So let's go ahead and push the horizontal out a little bit more and let's uh, increase the vertical spacing there a little bit. There we go. Looks pretty good there. Now, this is always a live effect. You don't have to have it perfect. You can always go back and modify these changes, but I think that looks pretty good uh, for now. So let's go ahead and click OK. We'll zoom out here and see what we've got. So we've got a string of these um, zigzagging dots, basically. Well, now what we're going to do is go into the Effect menu again and go to Distort and Transform, and we're going to apply a second transformation. So let's go in there and select that. And again, and this time I'm only going to put 20 copies in and let's turn the preview on and this we're, and we're just going to take the horizontal slider here and push it over and then we start to get a cool pattern emerging here very cool in fact i'm going to space this out a little bit more there we go so that looks pretty good so now it's a little offline but let's go ahead and take us and make some adjustments so i'm going to open up my window menu and go and open the appearance panel which is already open here and you can see where we have applied these effects. We have the two transform settings here. So let's go ahead and click on the first one and perhaps increase that vertical spacing a little bit more. You can turn on preview, it always is off by default. And I think that light might look pretty good. Let's bump up that horizontal spacing just a little bit slightly. Notice we can make these live changes and that looks pretty good. So it looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and click OK. Now, you'll notice that the only circle selected is that first one, that the original one that we created. And that's the only one that will ever be selected. These are all just representations of that based on the transformation effect we applied. So any change we make to this one circle will be reflected in all of these remaining ones that are transforming down. So let's zoom in on that specific one there and change it up a little bit. Well, let's first off go ahead and maybe scale it down a little bit. I'm going to go over here into the toolbar and grab the Convert Anchor Point tool, which is grouped with the Pen tool, and go ahead and click on the top and bottom control points here, and it will get rid of the curve on that particular shape. Notice how it's reflecting in all the other shapes. Reselect the Move tool, and I'm going to go over here and, and scale this object, but I'm going to hold down the Option key, Alt on Windows, grab either one of these side handles, and just scale toward the center, just like that. So it looks like it's kind of like the diamond plating little dots you would see. Well, let's take it even further than that. I'm going to go up and grab the rotation tool. And let's select the object again. There we go. Grab the rotation tool. Hold down your shift key and just drag and rotate 45 degrees. Now because of the X 
reflect that we have on that one transform, it's going to alternate the, the transformation, watch, boom. And now it looks like the pattern that you would see on a diamond plating. In fact, we need to make this a little bit bigger and all the size is readjusted accordingly. Let's make it a little bit smaller. That's the cool thing about these live effects is you can make these changes and then go in here and now ultimately we've got a very cool diamond plate pattern. So the pattern itself is done and ready to go. So let's select that object and I don't really need to expand it to select all the objects. It will remember all of these shapes. So just select that one key object or the key object here that's uh, making all the, the entire pattern. Go to, to edit, copy. And we're gonna jump over here into Photoshop. Let's go ahead and minimize this. And let's create a new document. And it's gonna create a document based on the measurements of the object that you just copied into your clipboard. So it's fairly large, so let's go ahead and click okay. And before I paste this in, I'm gonna create the background for this. So let's go into the grab the gradient tool and I'm gonna grab this generic copper gradient right here. And the only reason I like that is because it's got a nice variation of tones here, but what I'm gonna ultimately do is get rid of the color. So on this document, let's create a new layer. Actually, no, I'm just gonna apply it to the background layer. Using the circular or radial gradient, which is the second one right here, I'm just gonna start at any point and just drag out the gradient. So it gives me a variation of color there. Remove the color, or it gives me a variation of tones there, but we're gonna remove the color by simply pressing Shift-Command-U, and there we get a variation of gray tones. Well, let's go ahead and click at the new layer icon here in the Layers panel, make a new layer. Go to the Edit menu, go to Paste, and we'll go ahead and paste it as pixels, click OK, and there is my diamond plate pattern. Well, it doesn't look like diamond plating yet. That's because we're gonna give it some effects here in Photoshop. So on that layer, let's go into the, the layer style panel and apply a bevel and emboss. Up, up inside here, we're gonna mess with, uh, let's go and bump up the depth here and increase the size a little bit. And I'm gonna change the technique to chisel hard. And you can go in here and change the direction of the lighting by simply moving around this target. And it will have a different effect on those shapes, as you can see right there. So feel free to play around with these settings and getting the right scenario. Now, one more thing I'm gonna do is go into the blending options of the layer style and take your fill opacity to zero. And that will get rid of that black shape and revealing only the layer style, giving it a little bit more realistic diamond plate look to it. There we go. So that looks pretty good. We can probably add uh, an outer glow and make it black just so it has a little bit uh, of a hint of a shadow perhaps. There we go. Bump the size up a little bit there. Probably a little bit much. Let's take it down to 10 and drop the opacity to about 50. So it's very subtle, but it is there. It does make a difference. Look at that difference between that and there. There we go. But there we have our realistic diamond plating created using both Illustrator and Photoshop together. So if we zoom in at 100%, you can see it does look pretty real. And this can be used for pretty much anything, a design effect, background, or anything like that. You can also experiment with different looks of diamond plating. We did it this way, but jump inside that layer style and go back in that bevel and emboss and try different bevel uh, settings. Let's say we try chisel soft, gives you a little bit more gritty look to it. Or you can try maybe embossing it, bringing the depth down a little bit, maybe dropping the size down a little bit, and you get a little bit more wider version. So all kinds of different types of diamond plating you can experiment with just by messing around with these layer styles and it's completely forgivable. You can do an effect, hit OK, and if you decide you don't like it, you can always go back in there and change it. That's the beauty between layer styles in Photoshop and live effects inside Illustrator. Very cool stuff.